Welcome to the second day of our ULAB Multicultural Conclave and a very warm welcome to all the wonderful people who will be presenting their papers, the audience and all the other people out here who will be helping us and guiding us throughout this panel. My name is Anika Tahasin and I am a lecturer at the Department of English Language, uh, English and Humanities at ULAB. So uh, our, we have three participants all together today. Our first presenter is Tohida Sultana from Leading University. Then we have Shukanto Bishwash from uh, Bangabuntu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Science and Technology University. And finally, we have Choiti Chakraborty from Brack University. So uh, before we get started with our presentations, I would like to inform every presenter that each and every one of you will be allocated 10 minutes each for your presentation. We will let you know two minutes before um, as your time for the presentation is near its end. And the Q&A session for all the presentations will be after all the presentations are done and 10 minutes will be allocated for that. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to invite our very first presenter, Ms. Tohida Sultana to present her paper. Thank you, Madam. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Madam, I want to share my uh, screen. Yes. Uh, I think um, uh, if, uh, if the IT person could make all the participants uh, the co-host, Tohida Sultana, ma'am, and then we have uh, Shukanto Bishas, sir, and Choiti Chakraborty, ma'am. So if you guys could make them the co-host, they would be able to uh, share their screens, right? Uh, all right. So please go ahead. And uh, volunteer, please start uh, timing. My screen is visible? Uh, yes, I can see your screen. Thank you very much. Welcome to the uh, conclave and uh, I'm going for my topic uh, directly and my topic is the disappearing nose rule and anti-colonialist or a rebel. I hope that you, I'm audible. Am I mad? Okay, thank you, madam. I'm from a leading university. I'm assistant professor there working for seven years and it is my abstract. Here, I'm going to start with the word rebel, because I'm asking the question whether we call our Kajin Uzul Islam as a rebel or an anti-colonialist. If you look at our word rebel, and from the Cambridge Dictionary, I found uh, the meaning of the word is that who is going to be a rebel? A person who is opposed to the political system in their own country and tries to change it using by forces. So if we look at the word rebel and think about our Kajin Uzul Islam, what the scenario we are getting is that he is not um, actually revolting against his own country. Instead, he is revolting against the British Janta, the colonial power. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, it is also indicates that a person um, who doesn't like rules or authority, does our Kajin Uzul Islam was like a person who doesn't like rules? No, 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 he doesn't. Because if you look at the uh, treatment of the British people uh, against our um, uh, um, Indian subcontinental peoples, you will see there is maltreatment and mal, uh, ill treatment against us. So how we can call him as a rebel poet? Again, I, from the Mariam Dictionary, I found the word, the rebel who is disobedient or the one who rebels or participates in a rebellion. They are talking about these things that um, the people who is participating in any type of rebellion and moving against the government is, will be known as a rebel. 
So um, uh, uh, again, I am, I'm, I'm going for the Oxford Dictionary, and it is saying that who rises in opposition, opposition and armed resistance against an established government. So a government is established in the country, and uh, the person who is rebel is going to resist this government. So if you look at this, all the word meanings from different dictionaries, this doesn't apply to our national poet, Kaji Nuzrul Islam. Why? Because if we look back to the Joseph Conrad's uh, novel, Heart of Darkness, where um, for the native people, there are lots of words are used. For example, they are calling the native peoples as criminals. They are talking about they are our enemies. And um, in one uh, uh, third chapter, we looked at they are talking that, yes, the native people are as rebels. So Kars is not going to consider or tolerate any types of rebels. They are his foes. And what is the punishment? Punishment is uh, execution. So when Mr. Kars is uh, talking about the native people, uh, he, Mr. Kars is the colonialist and the native people are is the people of the Africa. So Africa lives in Africa and why the colony, colonialist people call us rebels? So this is the main question in my mind that I'm asking that whether uh, I should call Kazi Nuzrul Islam as a rebel. So I cannot call him a rebel. Instead, he has some revolutionary zeal that we can find in Parsibishi Shelley's cases. If you look at the Parsibishi Shelley, you will see that he has uh, written West Wing and there is lots of revolutionary zeals. And these zeals will be able, it is found in our Kajinos Islam's poems. So if we cannot, uh, uh, cannot um, um, call him our Kajin Uzul Islam as rebel, what is the cause? I'm going uh, forward for these reasons. It is because British people were the interloper in this Indian subcontinent. They are occupying our land by force. They are destroying our natural resources and also gathering taxes, which is actually illegal. So British government is itself illegal and unlawful. So it is not an established government. The British people call Kazi Nuzrul Islam as a rebel poet, but we shouldn't call him as a rebel poet because he never, never ever um, uh, go against the rule of the country. He wrote about against the colonial junta and who is actually a illegal uh, government. To proclaim his right and his liberty, Nuzrul writes that encouraging his countrymen to stand against the illegitimate colonial uh, power. Now I'm moving to the word anti-colonial. If we look at the word anti-colonial, anti-colonial means that uh, opposing the colonial rule uh, of one country by another. So it is very common if someone outside come to our country and we oppose it because you are outsider and ruling us, I cannot accept these things. So it is very common to oppose it. So when rule resists the colonial maltreatment and his government, so we can turn him as anti-colonialist. So if I um, uh, use the word anti-colonialist, you will, uh, if, if you think about in a deep sense, if you look at that, when we was what the word anti, for example, I'm a party and uh, I, if I call that this person is my anti-party, then we were, use the word anti-party. Like I am the party and he is my opposition. So if the colonial people use the word anti-colonialist for our Kajin Nuzrul Islam, it is okay. Why it is okay? Because Kajin Nuzrul Islam is writing against them. So they call, the colonialist people can call our Kajin Nuzrul Islam as anti-colonialist. And so what we should call, I will prefer the word nationalism because nationalism means that a nation's wish and attempt to be politically independent. And this can be found in the writings of our Kajin Nuzrul Islam. So when we are getting the nationalist power, so I will prefer uh, the word nationalist for our Kajin Nuzrul Islam. He is a freedom fighter, a revolutionist for nationalism. So when we are uh, thinking about that, which word is actually perfect, I will, uh, I will suggest that no, it is not the word rebel is perfect for our Kajin Nusrul Islam, neither anti-colonialist is perfect for our Kajin Nusrul Islam. 
the word nationalist is the perfect because he wrote uh, for his country, for his countrymen. And also uh, uh, the Cardinal Islam's writings uh, upholds the nationalism and uh, national independence from the intruder British colonial power. He is a prophet of national supremacy and independence. For his all types of uh, effort, we can be considered him uh, that uh, his writings bearing uh, all the, all the um, things that help us uh, to um, wake up as a nationalist, to think about our national um, uh, identity. This identity is very important for our freedom and for the, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, different, uh, we have uh, gone to different opposition uh, against the British people. Yes, madam. Uh, Ms. Tohida, I would just like to inform you that you have two minutes left. Okay, madam, thank you very much. So um, uh, um, I'm going to make it a very uh, short. And uh, I'm uh, actually um, thinking about that. If we look uh, look into the uh, poems of our poet, uh, then it will be more justifiable. For example, uh, I'm taking a poem. Uh, the name of the poem is the Song of Yoth, which is in Bangla known as Notuner Gan, and um, which is um, very much familiar among us as as a Chol 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 or the March song. In this poem, uh, what is the main idea our poet is showing? It is like that. The, in the poem, the poet has encouraged our uh, countrymen, Indian subcontinental people, uh, and, and the youth to come forward and fight against the uh, maltreatment of the British ruler and make this country free from these sufferings. They should battle without any terror. They should have a strong heart and they should never back out from their duties towards the country. They are the one who can bring a bright day for our uh, nation, for our country and for our independence. So this is the things we are finding from this poem. And this is not, a, uh, if you look at the um, thematic concern of this poem, you are not finding that he is actually a rebel. Just he is upholding his national identity and calling all the people of this Indian subcontinent. Um, together, we can uh, overcome the British colonialist. So uh, that's all uh, from me. And I hope that um, if you have any question, uh, your suggestion will be help me to complete this paper. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tohida, ma'am. It was a really interesting paper and we will definitely have some question and answers, I'm sure, uh, for this brilliant paper. So uh, our next presenter is Mr. Uh, Shukanto Bishash from Bongobundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Science and Technology University. So I would politely request you to start presenting your paper. The title of my presentation is as you have already known, violence as an element in the making of the self, a case study of Kazi Nuzul Islam's selected poems. In my paper, what I would like to focus is uh, bringing some selected poems of Nuzul. I would like to detect the elements of violence and the elements, how those elements are instrumentally helping to the formation of identity or self. Uh, my, my point is that. So largely I will focus uh, the texts of the poems uh, where I will uh, I'll try to find out the elements of violence. Now uh, let me uh, talk some background. Uh, Nuzul was born, we all know, in the British India in a turbulent period of socio-political uh, cultural upheavals when the anti-British movements were culminating. The political and cultural uh, happenings like partition of Bengal and the annulment, Gandhi's non-cooperation movement, Khilafat movement, activities of secret revolutionary organizations, mass killing of Jali on Alabag, etc. had an enormous impact upon the psyche of the all ops, all ops of people. Nuzul's childhood and adolescence passed amidst all these events. Moreover, the misrule of the colonizers 
the poverty and uncertainty of life and indomitable pursuit of freedom led Nozul to be thoughtful and determined to work for the country. During his, during his school life, Nozul was well aware of the activities of revolutionary groups uh, from his teacher, Nibaran Chandra Ghatak, and the aspirations to achieve independence, breaking the colonial shackles, sparked in the mind of young Nazul, like all the oppressed and suffering people. So motivated with the passion and bohemianism, lust for adventure, uh, Nazul joined the 49th Bengal Pulton in the First World War. And during this time of Nazul's life, uh, a few global landmark incidents, for instance, Irish Revolution, Turkish Revolution, Russian Revolution, uh, had big impact upon his life. At this stage, uh, he, enter uh, he had his uh, literary uh, enterprise uh, with the comp composition of the poem, The Rebel. And Rebel is a very ground-shaking poem, we all know, and along with Rebel, a few revolutionary poem, poems, for instance, The Comet, Dumketu, The Ecstasy of Destruction, Prolayolash, Kamal Pasha, The Wardram, Ranoveri, Pioneers of Pioneers, Agropothic, Arrival, Agomoni, Blood Red Attire, Raktambar Tharini Ma, and etc. These poems uh, uh, need to be analyzed for the sake of finding the elements of violence. My present article tends to offer a thorough investigation into the violent mode of projecting the antagonistic and binary relationship between the colonized India and the colonizer British in the representative and selected poems like this. Therefore, drawing on an in-depth analysis of the chosen poems, a warlike scenario is portrayed in my paper, while I will see I will, I will show the violently resisting self declares war against any form of misrules and injustices committed by the imperial power. Now, for the theoretical foregrounding, I would like to incorporate Franz Fano's uh, treatment of violence and M.S. Cesar's reflections on colonizer and colonized relationship. Fano, we know, resolutely accepts violence as a tool to encounter uh, the violence created by the colonizers, which is projected in his essay concerning violence. This act of violence, according to Fano, is inevitable for the process of decolonization. And I think that that very process of decolonization aligns with the formation of self and identity, which this article seeks to Excuse me. Uh, Professor, you are muted. Moreover, I will also relate the dynamics of the relationship between colonizer and the colonized, more specifically, the superiority and inferiority complex propagated by Caesar in his ground-shaking essay, Discourse on Colonialism. Now, let me put some reflections on the concept of violence and self. Violence is a constantly encountered phenomena in the present world. We all know it is an inevitable truth that every person living today will experience directly or indirectly some type of violence. Violence as a word is derived from the Latin violence that means vehemence and unbridled and passionate force. However, violence has a layered and uh, layered of meanings and implications. In the article, two concepts of violence Vittorio Buffesti uh, reviews the concepts and thinking about violence propagated by prominent theorists. He is in the he in the study delineates violence through the two approaches: the minimalist approach and the comprehensive approach. While the minimalist approach uh, pays attention on the physical uh, torture or physical force as to kill or injure, inflict direct harm or pain. Uh, the uh, comprehensive approach is uh, the comprehensive approach suggests a rather broader perspective where Robert Ori 
incorporates psychological aspect of violence. Moreover, the structural or institutional violence is also acknowledged as a grave concern in the approach of defining violence. Now, let me uh, focus uh, the idea of self. Noted psychiatrist J. Gilhotra in his article, The Concept of Self, attempts to explore diverse views of, of the idea of self. Here, the opinions of the psychiatrists and uh, psychologists like Haynes, Kahoot, Russell, Mears, Carl Jung are notably presented. Kahoot describes self as a permanent mental Cons uh, men uh, mental structure consisting of feelings, memories, and behaviors that are subjectively experienced as being continuous in time and as being me. Russell Mears talks of different aspects of self and he adds the features of awareness or consciousness, nature of instability, connectedness, psychic, and physical inner state. And I am skipping some parts due to the time uh, constraints. Now, what I would like to do, keeping all the theorists' notion and definitions in mind, uh, I tend to reflect on the aspects how these are treated, the ideas of violence and self, in the poems of Nozul's. What I denote by the term violence in case of Nozul's poems is the poet's predominant call for a fierce fight against the social inequalities, injustice, and malpractices. His revolutionary oh, Mr. Vishash, I would like to inform you that you have two more minutes. Thank you, thank you. All right. And his revolutionary urge and conviction to combat and confront the colonizing power. For the arousal of collective consciousness, a destructive spirit is invoked through the imageries of irrepressible cruelty and arrogance, wild volcanic power, war drums, battle cries, the mythological stories of gods and goddesses in awe against the demonic and oppressive uh, forces. And all these are instrumentally helping to create a sense of effectiveness and emotional and psychological mobilization that interestingly engages us with the possibility of such violence that confers an identity on a people as a whole, transforming them into a political entity. Now, let me br very briefly focus a few representative poems of Nazrul to find out all the elements of violence and identity or self. So I am skipping a few parts and let me uh, first uh, um, start with uh, the, rebel, uh, the rebel. And the rebel, we see uh, uh, that uh, it is... Uh, it is an, it, it gives the promises of emotional and psychological mobilization and it irresistibly hesitates against passivity, against uh, being an object. Here in the poem, a search for identity is in the center of all and the poet from the behalf of all Indians strives to define the subjecthood or identity. And uh, if we read a few lines that I am irresistible, Mr. Uh, I am Vikas, uh, unfortunately, your time is up for the presentation. Thank you. Please, uh, if you uh, permit me a couple of uh, seconds, uh, then I, I can conclude it. Um, all right, just a few more seconds because we have Miss Choiti for the next upcoming presentation. Okay, from the above, thank you. From the above discussions and references of good number of poems, if we, we uh, 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 clearly observed. Nozul's poetry, poetry dominantly plays a prime role to alleviate the psychological servitude and tends to uphold a sharp binary self against the oppressive foreign forces of colonial India. The strong sensibility and the sense of identity that the poem inculcate in the minds ultimately shatter the colonizer's sense of superiority as well as the colonized inferiority complex. So uh, I, I would like to uh, conclude uh, with the words that the uh, self of the Vishash, Unfortunately, I will really have to stop you here. I'm really it's okay, sorry. It's okay. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for understanding me, uh, Mr. Vishash. But uh, it was indeed a very interesting paper. And I know 10 minutes is really not enough for such an interesting paper. So, but as far as uh, I have heard it, seemed to be really interesting and i'm really looking forward to hearing more from this paper but um 
for the time being, I would love to invite Ms. Choiti Chakraborty from Prak University to present her paper. So, Ms. Choiti, if you are present. Good morning, I'm going to talk to you. श्रद्धा विषय बांगाली जतियत चेतना विकाशे कजी नजरुल इसलम अवदान शिक्षक ब्रैक विश्वविद्यालय सम्भवनारे जार जन्म द्रोह प्रेम मानवता साम्य तारण्य और जागरण कवि कजी नजरल असाम्प्रदायिक बांगाली संस्कृति उन्नतम कारीगर बहुमत्रिक सहजात यहाँ अन्य सृजनशीलत ऋद्ध होते विभिन्न क्षेत्र भारतवर्षे सहित्य संस्कृति राजनीति नजरल भूमिका एक ऐतिहासिक घटना रवीन्द्रनाथ पर बांगला साहित्य एक नतून जुग सृष्टि कर भाषा से बेदनार जुग मानुषर जुग साम्य गान मानवतार कथा विश्व मानवतार मुक्त बार्ता मानवतार मुक्ति साधन नजरल सहित्य कर्मे अन्नतम अनिष्ट मानुषे अवचेतन सत्ताय जेले दीते चेहन मानविकतार आलो धर्म कुसंस्कार के अतिक्रम कर मानविकतार शक्ति दिए विभाजन बिुदे धर्म व्यवसायी बिुदे सत्य सुंदर असत्य असुंदर अमंगल अन्या कुसंस्कार बिुदे अर्थनैतिक बैषम्य बिुदे मानुष हिसाब से मानुषे मर्यादा प्रतिष्ठा और श्रमिक और नारी अधिकार हिंदू मध्यबित्त नवजागरण जख सम्पूर्ण हो राष्ट्रीय क्षमता लाभ उत्कंठित तक नतून आशा उज्जीवित मुस्लिम मध्यबित्त हम नवजागरण ठीक ए रकम एक मुहूर्ते नजरल आविर्भव प्रथम महाजुद्ध समय पृथ्वी व्यापी हताशार पटभूम नवजाग्रत मुस्लिम मध्यबित्त समाज नतून स्वप्न सम्भवना मैं नजरल कवि मानुषर मूल शक्ति प्रेरणा नवजाग्रत समाज क्रम विकाशित आंदोलन शक्ति आधार बुर्जुआ विकास प्रयास संगे संगे कलमार्स मत दर्श अनुजी साम्यवादी समाज व्यवस्था आंदोलन विकास लाभ कर ब्रिटिश बिधी आंदोलन अभिघात नजरल शिल्पी मानव व्यापक प्रभाव भारतवर्षे अठारो निानबे साले चौबीस मे तेरश छोटे नजरल मानुषे असाम्प्रदायिक मूल्यबोध सूत्रपात सुशील कुमार गुप्त नजर चरित मानस बेखने कीर्तन हतो कथकता हतो जान हतो मौलवी कुरान पाठ और व्याख्या हतो दुरंत बालक गभर आग्रह और मनोजगर संगे से घंटार पर घंटा काटिए दी बाउल सूफी दरबे साधु सन्यासर संगे अंतरंग नजर प्रथम प्रकाशित कविता मुक्ति मुजित है तेरश छब्बीस बंगाब्दे बंगी मुसलमान सहित्य पत्रिकाय सम्पर्क समालोचक भाष्य पराधीनता श्रृंखल मुक्तर समकाले बिराजमान विप्लत्म सशस्त्र संग्राम सह गांधीजी अहिंस असहजोग और मुसलमान खिलाफत आंदोलन प्रभाव में तरह मनोभूमि ब्रिटिश बिोधी चेतना छो प्रबल फले मातृभूमि के विदेशी शोषण मुक्त करते जतियत संग्रामे आत्म उत्सर्ग कर कवि प्रबल प्रतिकूलतार भेतर दिए क्या करते हुए एकदि के घर बाधा सजात पश्चात मुख्य असहजोगता और कुसंस्कार समाज अपरदी के शासक ब्रिटिश राजद्रोहर खर्ब प्रतिकूल और दुर्भिस राजनैतिक सामाजिक अवस्थार मध्य अबहत भावे क्या कर कवि ये कोट कर डर आबुल आजाद नजरल बजेप्त निषिध बी थे 
উনিশশো সালে নজরুল ইসলাম রাজদ্রোহের অপরাধে অভিযুক্ত এবং বন্দী হন তখন তার তিনটি গ্রন্থ প্রকাশিত হয়েছে উনিশশো সালের ছয় জানুয়ারি মুসলিম ভারত থেকে বিদ্রোহী সাপ্তাহিক বিজলি পত্রিকায় সংকলিত হয়ে প্রকাশিত হয় এগারোই আগস্ট উনিশশো সালে অর্ধ সাপ্তাহিক ধূমকেতু পত্রিকায় প্রথম প্রকাশিত হয় এবং এটার আমরা জানি সম্পাদক কাজী নজরুল ইসলাম ছিলেন এবং এখানে আয় চলে আয়রে ধূমকেতু রবীন্দ্রনাথের এই শুভেচ্ছা বাণী এই পত্রিকার প্রত্যেক সংখ্যায় ছাপা হতো এবং এই পত্রিকাটি আমাদের সাহিত্য এবং আমাদের জাতীয়তাবাদী চেতনার জায়গা থেকে খুবই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ কারণ এই পত্রিকায় প্রথমবারের মতো নজরুল স্বাধীনতার দাবি উত্থাপন করেছিলেন এবং আমরা দেখতে পাই ইংরেজ শাসকগোষ্ঠীর যে অত্যাচার নির্যাতন যখন চরমে পৌঁছেছিল তখন নজরুল উচ্চারণ করেছিলেন তার বিদ্রোহী বাণী কারার হয়ে লৌহ কপাট ভেঙে ফেল করে লোপাট রক্ত জমট শিকল পূজোর পাশান বেদি ওরেও তরুণ নিশান জাতীয়তা আধুনিক মানুষের এক বিশাল চেতনার নাম এই চেতনার দ্বারা একটি ভূখণ্ডের মানব গোষ্ঠীর ঐক্যবোধ স্বাতন্ত্র্যবোধ ও স্বাধীনতা প্রকাশ পায় উনিশ শতক ছিল জাতীয়তার যুগ জাতীয় স্বাধীনতার চিন্তা যখন সর্বত্র প্রাধান্য পেত জাতীয় শিক্ষা জাতীয় আদর্শ জাতীয় সাহিত্য জাতীয় সভ্যতা এই সময় বাঙালিদের চিন্তা চেতনার মূল মঞ্চ ছিল মাইকেল মধুসূদন দত্ত বঙ্কিমচন্দ্র চট্টোপাধ্যায় হেমচন্দ্র নবীনচন্দ্র রবীন্দ্রনাথ সবার সাহিত্যে জাতীয়তা রঙে রঞ্জিত হলো জাতীয়তাবাদী আন্দোলনের প্রখর উদ্দীপনার মধ্যেও বাংলা কবিতা হিন্দু মুসলিম ঐতিহ্যের হৃদয়গ্রাহী সমন্বয় সাধিত হয়নি সভায় সম্মেলন হিন্দু মুসলমানের একতা হিন্দু মুসলমানের মিলনের কথা উভয় সম্প্রদায়ের নেতারা বারবার বলেছেন কিন্তু তাদের কথা কাজে পরিণত করার মতো কবি শিল্পীকে তখন পাওয়া যায়নি বাঙালি চেতনায় দেশভক্তির একটা ঐতিহ্যগত রূপ ছিল মূলত তা ছিল বঙ্কিমচন্দ্র প্রদত্ত দেশমাত্রিক পথ বাঙালি কবিরা এই ঐতিহ্যের দিকটাই বেশি ফুটে উঠেছে নজরুল জাতীয় স্বাধীনতার কামনায় উদ্বুদ্ধ হয়েছিলেন কিন্তু তার জাতীয়তার মধ্যে সীমাবদ্ধ ছিল না এবং এই বৈশিষ্ট্যটাই তার অন্যান্য কবি সাহিত্যিক থেকে তো মানুষের মুক্তি কামনা একাকার হয়ে গিয়েছিল নজরুলের কবিতায় জাতীয়তাবোধ বিপ্লববাদ সাম্যবাদের প্রকাশ দেখা যায় ভারতবর্ষের জাতীয়তাবাদী আন্দোলনের যে অংশটি বিপ্লবের দিকে ঝুঁকে পড়েছিল নজরুল ছিলেন তাদের সমর্থক স্বদেশ ও বিদেশের জাতীয় মুক্তি আন্দোলনের দিকে তার তীব্র আকর্ষণ প্রকাশ পেয়েছে কামাল পাশা আনোয়ার আব্দুল করিম জগলুল পাশা গান্ধী চিত্রন্দ দাস প্রমুখ জাতীয়তাবাদী নেতাদের প্রতি সাহিত্য রচনার মধ্য দিয়ে শ্রদ্ধা নিবেদনে জাতীয়তাবাদের প্রধান বৈশিষ্ট্যপূর্ণ স্বাধীনতা কামনা থেকে ব্যক্ত হয়েছে তিনি ছিলেন আপোষ বিরোধী বিপ্লবী গ্রন্থির সাম্প্রদায়িকতা মাওলানা মোহাম্মদ আলী তার এক বক্তিতায় বলেছেন যে সমস্যা আমাদের সমুদয় প্রচেষ্টা বারে বারে ব্যর্থ করে দিচ্ছে তা হচ্ছে হিন্দু মুসলিম সমস্যা নজরুল ইসলাম এই সাম্প্রদায়িক রাজনীতি কখনোই মেনে নিতে পারেননি সাহিত্যিক জীবনের শুরু থেকে শেষ পর্যন্ত তিনি সকল প্রকার সাম্প্রদায়িকতার বিরুদ্ধে আপোষীন সংগ্রাম করে গেছেন রাজনীতির ক্ষেত্রে বারবার ঐক্য সম্মেলন এবং প্যাক্ট করে দুটি সংস্কৃতির ক্ষেত্রে দুটি বিরোধী শিবির সারা দেশ জুড়ে গড়ে উঠেছিল এই বিদ্বেষের অন্ধকারে তখন অনেক মহাপুরুষই পথভ্রষ্ট হয়েছেন নজরুল আশ্চর্যজনক ভাবে এই পঙ্কিল পরিবেশের বাইরে থাকলেন কোন পক্ষ গ্রহণ করলেন না সেদিনের সেই হিংসার উন্মুক্ত পরিবেশে আসলে বাইরে থাকার যে কতটা কঠিন যেটা আমরা এখন হয়তো কিছুটা অনুভব করতে পারছি সাম্প্রদায়িক রাজনীতির বিরুদ্ধে নজরুল সচেতন ভাবে সংগ্রাম করেছেন কারণ তিনি বুঝতে পেরেছেন ভারতের স্বাধীনতার জন্য প্রধান বাধা হচ্ছে হিন্দু মুসলিম বিরোধের একটি প্রধান সমস্যা তিনি বলেছেন ভারত আর টু মিনিটস আছে ভারত আজ পরাধীন এবং আজ সে স্বাধীনতার পথে তার যাত্রা শুরু হয়নি সাহিত্যে প্রথমবারের মতো বাঙালি জাতীয়তা প্রকাশ পেল তার কবিতায় গানে গল্পে এবং উপন্যাসে হিন্দু মুসলমানের সংস্কৃতি এবং ঐতিহ্যের বন্ধুর মতো গলা ধরাধরি করে এলো কোরবানি মহরম দুর্গা পূজা সরস্বতী পূজা সবই হলো তার কবিতার বিষয় ঈর্ষা বিদ্বেষ কণ্ঠকৃত সমাজে নজরুল একটা সুস্থতার হাওয়া বইয়ে দিলেন সবকিছুর মধ্য দিয়ে হিন্দু মুসলিম সংস্কৃতির মিলন ঘটালেন নজরুল তার সাহিত্যের মধ্য দিয়ে আমি এর মাধ্যমে শেষ করছি আমার আজকের এই উপস্থাপন আমি শেষ করছি নজরুলের দুটি লেখার দুটি লাইনের মধ্য দিয়ে নম 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 বাংলাদেশ মম চির মনোরম চির মধুর বুকে নিরবধি বহে শত নদী চরণে জলধির বাজে নুপুর কিংবা দুর্গম গিরি কান্তার মরু দুস্তর পারো বারো হে লঙ্গিতে হবে রাত্রি নিশিতে যাত্রীরা হুঁশিয়ার বর্তমান সময় দেশে এবং দেশের বাইরে যে সাম্প্রদায়িক বিভিন্ন ঘটনার মধ্য দিয়ে আমরা পথ চলছি আশা করি নজরুলের এই সাহিত্যগুলো আমাদেরকে উদ্বুদ্ধ করবে এবং নতুন ভাবে আমরা শুনেছি সবগুলো ইংলিশে ছিল কাজী নজরুল ইসলামের উপর একটা পেপার বাংলায় মানে 
অন্যরকমই একটা হচ্ছে গিয়ে এটার মানে ইনফ্লুয়েন্স পড়েছে আর মানে আই থরলি এনজয়েড দ্যাট সো থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ ফর ইউর প্রেজেন্টেশন um so uh, i would like to open the floor to any questions or any, any compliments any comments that any of us have for our wonderful presenters because tinta presentation ni tin dhoroner amazing chilo like they were interesting they were well researched and they were very 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 detailed so anyone who wants to ask our presenters any questions at all or any comments that you have the floor no, is i have a question for the uh, shukanto vishesh sir yes may i have please please okay. ma'am yes, sir um, i have uh, listened to your presentation but uh, um, i am also working on kazi nazrul islam so i have interest in a short sir is it possible for you to tell me that uh, how violence is making the self how violence is making self in nozul's points in a short that i it will be help me to in my further research okay thank you ma'am mm. uh, ultimately it was my focal point how the uh, idea of violence projected in the poems uh, are uh, working uh, to uh, the formation of identity and here uh, for uh, here the term self is working as identity to me to my paper i have shown that uh, the self i mean the entity uh, the muted and passive and objectified self or identity is um, uh, is standing against the colonizing force uh, with the violent approach i have tried to show um i have tried to show that uh, in the poems uh, the the imageries are predominantly violent there is or there is uh, destruction there is um, the killing and the demonic uh, the, the demonic forces are, are there the gods and goddesses are coming to uh, combat and confront so through this confrontation through this violence i am trying to show that how that the 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 independent identity or self is emerging i hope uh, i am uh, able to convey my ideas thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you ma'am and to you uh, uh, ma'am i have a question i i was uh, also uh, listening to your uh, presentation and you raised a question that whether we can call nazrul the rebel or uh, whether anti colonial uh, the 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 uh, you know whether that anti colonial is more befitting than the rebel here my question to you uh, or my uh, my observation uh, to you that uh, do you think that uh, don't you think that uh, nozul is uh, very often um, called the rebel poet and uh, he is our national poet and we all um, know that he is the rebel poet we have accepted it because of his rebel poet i mean because of his poem the rebel and uh, thank if, you sir for this that, and if that is true in a bigger canvas then should we also uh, can we also can't we also take uh, the rebel and anti colonial uh, as you know uh, substituting each other rather contradictory thank you sir uh, it is a common question what is your question is my question too but when i uh, go through the lines like what is the meaning of the word rebel the rebel word is actually for those people who are going against their own government the british or the pakistani whatever the uh, government is they are not our government okay so we, i am uh, want to say that he himself called that i am rebel ami bidrohir onoklanto shei din hobo shanto but the rebel word he used not for that i am rebel instead 
he is symbolically using this word rebel to uh, to voice to raise the voice against all the uh, colonial uh, power or uh, any illegal government okay so he is saying the word rebel not that i am rebel but i am uh, in the rebellion i am in the rebellion i am against your power because it is my power it is my country my place you are the outsider you should go out so his vision is like this way and he has the vision of nationalism our twiti madam presented that it is our nationalism uh, our in uh, in the in each and every poems we are getting in nozrul's poems songs or writings you will find the nationalism so he is one of the greatest nationalists if we call him anti colonialist it is not fair because we are not colonialist if we are the colonialist white people then we will call them anti colonialist okay we can call kajinos uh, anti colonialist but as our uh, own poet we should not call him a rebel instead he is the part of our nationality part of our nationalism so he is a nationalist poet revolutionary national, national poet i will say that he yes he has revolutionary rebellic zeal but he is not a rebel the white people may call him yes he is a rebel put him in the prison the colonialist will call him like this way but as a bengali people as a part of bangladesh i cannot accept it maybe in the future after 10 2 or 20 years later people accept this idea that yes he is not a rebel instead he is a nationalist a revolutionary nationalist in the time when people are just um, wailing the british people Uh, like in the in other poet you will see that they are uh, oiling the british government or colonialist government but in that period of time instead of oiling he raised his voice rebelled against the um, um, uh, colonialist people and he uh, let us know that it is our nationalism and to uphold the nationalism we have to work hard we have to come forward i hope that you got the, your Thank you. thank you ma'am you have uh, indeed uh, focused uh, uh, in a different way uh, uh, so uh, it, it is interesting I, i i hope that your full uh, fledged paper will also uh, help us to uh, find out all these issues thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you sir uh i have two questions if permitted madam you are muted you unmute yourself Oh, sorry. Thank and thank you so much. All right, I thought I had it unmuted. So yes, ah, uh, we are going to take just one more question ah uh, before we end the Q and A session, right? So ah, uh, Abra, if you could just you know go for the one that you want to ask the most. So ah, uh, all right. So my question is, ah, uh, it's a bit of a hypothetical question in that sense that if Nozul was alive today, and let's assume that he would write the same kind of poems that he wrote in those years because let's say it's not much has changed when it comes to governance would he still be called an anti colonialist uh, or would he call, be called a rebel and if he were called a rebel then isn't that true that no matter who the fight is against when it comes to the essentials he was a rebel rather than an anti colonialist if i uh, take your question uh, your question is uh, should i uh, call rebel or anti colonialist is this your question uh no my question is like let's assume that nozu was alive today right and he was writing the same kind of poems that he wrote in wrote when he was alive this let's face it like nothing fundamentally has changed like the governments has changed but nothing fundamentally has changed to when it comes to the social structure that he raised his voice against rights so at that time he was fighting against foreign powers so we might as well term him as an anti colonialist but essentially wasn't he a rebel when it comes down to the bare essentials okay okay but well, like you were saying that he wasn't a rebel he was rebel what is your point why shouldn't i call him as a rebel because he rebelled okay look at this situation at this present situation i am talking about all the ill treatment mistreatments against the people of our country i am talking 
will you call me rebel or I am the supporter of the uh, uh, mass people? Which word will you will prefer for me? Uh, it really depends on what position I am in and what point of view I am criticizing you through. Like, if I'm talking from the position of society, yes, you're a rebel. But if I am talking from the position of the common people, you're a revolutionary or... Yes, revolutionary. Yes, this word is important because we are people, we all this here who are here in this um, uh, uh, session, all are mass people. And when we find Kajin Azrul Islam, he is from among us and talking for us. So why I call my own people as a rebel? He's our no, no. nationalist. So, uh, let me make myself clear a bit more. Uh, I agree with the point of view that because he was fighting against the colonial powers back then, we can call him an anti-colonialist. But isn't an anti-colonialist essentially, when we strip it down to the bare essentials, a rebel? Like you are saying that they are calling me anti-colonialist or Kajin Uzul Islam anti-colonialist. Look, the word is colonialist and anti-colonialist. The white people calling Nuzrul as anti-colonialist power, it should be cut off. It should be shut down. Okay, they are our anti-party. So the anti-colonialist, if we uh, term our Kajin Uzul Islam, it is termable. I can term him as an anti-colonialist. But if I turn him as an anti-colonialist, it will create questions in my mind that he is not an anti-colonialist. Instead, he is a nationalist. He is working for our national identity. To uphold the national identity, he is doing all these activities. And when doing these activities, it is increasing our freedom. Our freedom fighters also rebelled against the Pakistani junta, but we do not call them uh, uh, a rebel. Instead, we uh, call our freedom fighters as a freedom fighter. So he is a fighter, he is an intellectual fighter who intellectually fought against the, all the colonial power. He is a nationalist, he is a revolutionary nationalist. Uh, can I get your uh, point? I think I can get your point. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Thank you for your answer. Yeah. Thank you very much for your question. Oh, right. Thank you so much. By the way. All right. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for all the amazing papers and the Q&A session was also very interesting. So, thank but you. unfortunately, we do not have more time. So I will have to end this uh, session here.